So I've been using the iPhone 13 Pro Max for the past one month now and uh, this is easily the best iPhone. I mean, scratch that. This is easily the best phone. Let me spin. So the biggest compliment that I can give to the iPhone 13 Pro Max is there is almost nothing this phone is missing that I am actively looking forward to the next iPhone. Maybe Apple is moving the notch. So you see, the way I judge how good a phone is by analyzing how it makes me feel. And the iPhone 13 Pro Max has made me feel extremely happy and satisfied. There hasn't been a single day where I had any intention to put the phone down. Everything about this phone is awesome. And one of the reasons for that is the heart of the phone, which is the latest and arguably the most powerful mobile processor, the Apple A15 Bionic chip. Lag does not exist anywhere near this chip is present. Everything is buttery smooth. But you see, it's not just about having the fastest processor that makes this phone so incredible, so awesome, that I'm now willing to look past that massive price tag of 1850 Australian dollars. It's about the whole experience, and that includes the display, the software, the battery, and of course, the camera. And guess what? Those are the major area of improvement that Apple made in this year's iPhone. So at front, there is a flat 6.7 inch Super Retina OLED display. This is easily one of the best display on a smartphone. Consuming content of any kind on this display has been an incredible experience. There is still a notch at top. It is a little bit smaller than last year, but still here. So does the notch bother me? No. Does it not interfere with the content consumption? No. Do I wish Apple had removed the notch in favor of modern higher screen to body ratio bezel-less design? Absolutely. But the only reason I am content with having a notch in 2021 flagship is the Face ID. That is an incredible feature, as fast, as reliable, and more importantly, it makes everything very, very convenient. Like for a super lazy person like me, that eliminate one or two steps to type the password or use the fingerprint to open and close the app, unlock the phone, is super, super handy. I'm in love with this Face ID so much that I am willing to take a notch display with a Face ID rather than a full bezel-less display with the other one. Now, the biggest upgrade with this year's iPhone display is not the notch becoming smaller. It's actually the inclusion of the adaptive 120 Hz high refresh rate. Now, I've been using the high refresh rate display for quite a while now, and I can comfortably tell the presence of high refresh rate is an absolute must to deliver a smooth user experience and it's about time the Apple jumped into the bandwagon and the difference has been massive. But the one thing that I don't like about the display and the refresh rate is how aggressive Apple's approach has been towards saving the battery. Like I have consistently seen the refresh rate dropping way too much even when I'm scrolling up and down. Now. I personally don't think there was a need for this kind of aggressive approach and Apple should have let the 120Hz fly all the time. Like they should have given us the option to stay the display 120Hz all the time because this phone has an incredible juice. And that brings me to the battery. The 4350mAh battery is just insane. Not once, not twice. There have been multiple occasions where I've been able to use the phone for almost two days with my normal use on a single charge. This phone is constantly giving me around nine and a half hours of screen on time, which is absolutely crazy. And that's why I said there was no need for Apple 
to take such an aggressive approach with the refresh rate. Like the phone has such an awesome battery that there was no need for it. And if we really want to save some battery, we can manually switch the refresh rate back to 60 hertz. But it is what it is. And I absolutely love this massive battery bump because it has allowed me to enjoy whatever I'm doing without having to worry about charging. And I believe most of the gamers will agree with me when I say that the ability to play games for hours and hours is one of the best feeling. I had an incredible time with the multimedia consumption with this phone. But because of the massive battery display, the titanium finish and the glass sandwich design, this is neither a small, slim or a lightweight phone. It's heavy, bulky and super wide. Now personally, I love a phone which has a bit of a weight and bulkiness to it as it gives me an impression that the phone is solid and uh, premium in the hand. And that's the reason why I haven't had any issue with the weight and bulkiness of the phone. Now there was a minor issue in the beginning as I wasn't feeling this wide design because it's not a comfortable fit in one hand. But after using the phone for a few days, I realized the wide design functionality wise makes more sense because content within this display get evenly filled out. So unlike other flagship Android smartphone or other phone in general, there is no big black bars on the side for watching videos or the content, they don't get stretched out as much as other phone. So this wide display design ergonomic wise, is not so great, but functionality wise, it's awesome. Now Apple decision to stick with the notch design for the past four years kind of shows that their focus is more on the software front rather than the hardware where they are trying to make the software as satisfying and as enjoyable as possible. So this combination of iOS 15 with A15 Bionic chip and 120 Hz delivers one of the smoothest and hands down one of the best experience I've ever had while using a smartphone. This experience is the main reason I have been able to put the phone down. Like the whole animation within the UI, the layout, the design, everything feels ridiculously smooth. Like it's not aggressively fast as compared to other UI and other phone. Now don't get me wrong, I did try different animation within the UI, but the default one is the one that spoiled me. And the final thing that could spoil anyone interested in a photography is these cameras. These triple 12 megapixel camera setup is easily one of the best if not the best right now. Now during the sunny day, I don't think there are many cameras that will struggle as the lighting is more than enough to make every color pop and make the picture looks good. It's during the tough conditions where a true quality camera really shine. And this is easily one of those cameras. I absolutely love all the photos during the day, but especially during the night. These nighttime photos are not super bright for the sake of making it visible, but it's not too dark either. The camera does an incredible job with the dynamic range. It's just how a night photograph is supposed to be, a picture in a low light condition. Also, I really had a fun time using the macro mode where I look really stupid taking close up pictures in public, but the end product was really, really good. Now, personally, I'm not interested in this kind of photography, but for those who are, this is an option. The video quality of this phone is absolutely amazing. The stabilization is great. The quality of the video speaking itself and the overall video looks very sharp and detailed. <laughs> and to be honest, I wasn't that much surprised with the quality of these cameras, whether it's in photography or in videography. I mean, that's how high the iPhone camera has set the standard for mobile photography and videography. So yeah, that was my rant on why I love the iPhone 13 Pro Max so much that I don't even care that it is costing more than a folding phone. Now, obviously I would have loved if Apple would have priced the phone a little bit cheaper, but I don't mind the price because this is one of those phones that once you buy, you don't have to worry about something else for the next few years because it has almost everything, everything to keep you happy and satisfied. A serious contender for phone of the year. That's been it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. 
Quero jogar assim, ó. 